be a day that I will stand before the Lord. Now, if I just live life the way I want to live it here, if I just do it the way I want to live it, then what's going to happen is I will stand before the Lord and I may not hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. If I'm living for God's purposes, doing God's will, then when I get to heaven, you will hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And then we will be given crowns or authorities in accordance with our life of obedience on earth because there's various things that, various things that all of these crowns come into our life or these blessings come into our life. There's a storm that the breath of somebody is behind. Now, some people really get hung up in life because they can't see any further than the battle they're facing. They can't see any further than the people they're dealing with. It doesn't wear you down. It doesn't get you down. There's an empowering strength because the same Bible tells me not only does God want me to see things out of the eyes of my heart, but God says there's a strength. And all through the New Testament, see, because God knows if, if, you're, if my storm is going to change, it's not going to come from out here. If my storm is going to change, it must come from within here. Thank you for watching Victory. I'm Pastor Jerry Abels. Thank you for being part of us and a part of our spiritual family. We're in a prolonged series called Living the Supernatural Life. And in this series, we're having other smaller series that will help us move from step to step or from stage to stage to be connected with God in a much greater, greater way so God can be connected and involved in our life. All right, we're gonna go right back into the message that I'm teaching called War Chest, which is taking past victories and using past victories to give us an upper edge against the enemy. I believe God's going to teach us things during this series. Take advantage of our prayer number at the bottom of the screen. Call us and let us be involved in your life, agreeing with you as God moves you from stage to stage and from victory to victory and from glory to glory. Let's go right into that message now, War Chest. Now, people pray prayers like this. They say, Lord, why did you allow this to happen? Uh, I used to pray that kind of prayer. And, and let me tell you, that, that's a bad prayer. It has no scriptural basis to it. Because the Bible tells us that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That word bind and loose, in the Greek, it means allow or disallow. And God will not break his word. Jesus came to fulfill. He fulfills word. He does not break scripture. He fulfills scripture. What that scripture says, not only does it give me an authority in my storm, but it can also limit God in my storm. Because that scripture says, what I will allow God says, I have to allow. And what you disallow, God says, I will disallow it with you. Amen. And a lot of times in life, we just go and we're beat up by the enemy. The storms of life, I mean, we're on ships that's been so tattered from, from, from rough usage and, and weather storms. I mean, and it's really evident that I hadn't handled my storms right. Many times in my life that has been so evident, I didn't handle that storm right. But Jesus gave me the example of how to handle a storm and how that to turn. Years ago, Crystal's here this morning. When Crystal was a little baby, so a few years ago, when Crystal was a little baby, she, she came to this world extremely sick. I mean, she, she was sick, and it wasn't a day sickness, not even a week sickness. It ran into months. There was, there was two things. One thing is, is, man, I didn't have enough money to visit the doctor very often. But that wasn't the major. The major thing is I knew the enemy was trying to work something against my daughter. And so he had these prolonged illnesses occurring right after the other. And I tell you what, I let that get me down. And Lane did too. And we were so discouraged. We, we kept saying, God, don't allow this. Do not allow the enemy to do this to her. 
because she was a real gift of God to us. And so, but the enemy continued this on. Vanny, you may remember some of that. And in the process of it, I had a visit from one of my pastor friends. But when he left, I didn't think he was my friend anymore. Because he came and sat down in my house. And let me tell you, and my house was a shack. I mean, I, I, had, I, had, I could not afford any, I, 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 I tell you, trying to raise six kids and uh, was, and pastor, it was a tremendous job for me. So I allowed all these discouragements to just pull me down. And so I thought I was going to get a little sympathy from the pastor visit. It was a pastor from one of the neighboring churches here in town that I love very much, and I love this pastor. But it was unusual for him to come to my house. But somewhere he had heard that we were facing these times with Crystal. So he came, and he sat down in my living room. And he said, Jerry, how are things going? And I began to say, you know, pastor, I said, man, we're just fighting this. Uh, this, this illness, is, and we're so concerned all of a sudden, he became like a linebacker in my house. He rose up, and he said, Jerry Abels, you stop this. You quit allowing the devil to do this to your life. You take charge of this, Jerry. Man, I wanted to throw him out on his ears. He offended me greatly. Because he didn't do it with tact, and I was saying, God, if he was going to correct me, correct me with a little tact. <laughs> he came to get on me. He knew what he came in my house for, and he came to get on me. And then I had some previous history with people misunderstanding me, too. I can remember back years before that, God had put in my heart, Elaine and I told you, we were pastoring months of our salvation. I mean, we got saved, and God did such a wonderful job, work in our life. God's a problem, but with a desire and a passion. Two months after I was saved, I was pastoring. And uh, it really wasn't by my choosing either. <laughs> but I just, I just felt that I needed, and Lane and I both did, that we needed to give God our very best. So we pastored and lived off of $15 a week. And out of $15 a week, we had to find a house and everything, and $15 a week. And during that period of time, I tell you what, it was rough. I mean, God miraculously provided every, almost every day. I mean, man, we would come home and we would find, I, I tell you what, right before that period of time, I would literally drive to a four-way stop and pick up money out of it. I mean, God knew. God knew that Jerry and Lane, you're doing everything that you can do, and I'm going to come through for you. And, and he came through in so many miracle ways. But a pastor heard of it. He gave me a call, and he said, and he pastored a large church. And I was pastoring a very, very, very small church. And he said, Jerry, he said, I want you to come by my office. I said, wow, I'm being asked to come to the big guy's office. Wow. And I was so excited. I was so thrilled. I walked into his office, and he said, Jerry Abels, you got to quit being lazy. You're letting your family suffer. And I admit there was a sense of truth. I knew that people would misunderstand what Lane and I's decision had been. But I've had a lot of problems, but lazy has not been a big one in my whole life. But he began to get on me and ridicule me. And what I had considered holy, it seemed like he just took it and threw it in the mud and misjudged me. I walked out of that office. I cried and wept. I said, God, I was doing everything that I could do to try to do what you, I felt. I said, Lord, I can certainly be wrong. But Lane and I felt that we were to give our best for you. And we've been willing to raise these kids and, and, let tell you, and live in ash heaps. Literally where we lived, we lived in a back room of the church. We would 
take down our beds and put up Sunday school chairs on Sunday. And then we would take the, and the only bathroom we had was all the way at the front of the church. So it was uh, not easy living there. But then I finally, finally was able to rent a house, $35 a month. So you know what kind of house that was. And I went out there and wept and cried. And I said, Lord, they've misjudged me. Because, Lord, it wasn't my intention. It wasn't my intention to embarrass you. It wasn't my intention. This is what Lane and I felt in the Lord. So, carry back again. Pastor sitting in my house. Saying, Jerry, take charge of this thing. Rise up, son. Be an authority in this situation. Do not allow the enemy to do what he's done. Immediately, my mind went back to that same ridicule. And I thought, I've been misjudged again. And so I was pleasant with him, but he left my house. And this time, poor before, when I walked out of that pastor's office and he had misunderstood all our sacrifice and misunderstood everything that was, that was meant to be for us or we felt God wanted us to, this time I got down afraid and I expected the same thing. But God said, I sent him to get you to rise up against the storm. This storm is trying to take from you, Jerry. It's trying to take your daughter from you. And unless you rise up, I cannot stand up against it. And so I, after that pastor left and the Lord dealt with my heart, I tell you what, Lane and I stood up. We said, devil, no more. You are discovered. We've been able now to look past the sickness and see where the source of this problem really is. And the source of this problem is, devil, you've set an attack to steal my daughter from me. And I'm not going to allow it. And Lane and I began to take a spiritual authority that we desperately needed to. And let me tell you, almost immediately that thing broke off of Crystal's life and has not been back since. So praise God for people that will help us. Sometimes you have to live through the ones that our intentions may not be as well as that. But the major thing is, is that God helps us to become the people that God's called us to be, to be able to stand up in our battle. Amen? Amen. So the Bible says, then the next verse says, Luke 8, the disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. Now, then the next verse, it said, but when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, I am so thankful that the example that Jesus has given to us, I probably won't get to it today. <laughs> so let me just ask you a question. Whose hand do you identify with? Whose hand in the Bible do you identify with? Do you identify with blind Bartimaeus that has his hand reaching up? Jesus, heal me. Or are you able to identify with the hand of Jesus that reached down, that took blind Bartimaeus by the hand and healed his eyes? Which hand are you able to identify with? Do you identify with the little woman with the issue of blood? that said within our heart, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And so she pressed through that. Or do you identify with Jesus' hand that said, I felt power go out of me and heal. The truth of the matter, we are supposed to identify with both. There are times in my life that my life has been so broken and so defeated to where I was that little woman pressing through the crowd to some way touch Jesus. And I'm so thankful he's always been touchable. How many of you are thankful that he's always been touchable? But that's not the life God's called me to live. That's the life that God allows me to live in stepping up to the higher life that he has called me to live. Because you see, nowhere in the Bible 
does it tell me that the woman with the issue of blood is my example? Nowhere in the Bible does it tell me that blind Bartimaeus is my example. But all through the New Testament, it does tell me that Jesus is my example. Amen? So we have to make some determinations who we're going to identify with. And if, if we allow the enemy, the enemy will continue causing our hand to be the woman with the issue of blood, blind Bartimaeus, the leper that can't get healed, the defeated one, the discouraged one, the despondent one. But somewhere in the midst of that, God's got to change my identity. Somewhere in the midst of that, I must be changed from the person that is trying to the person that has for the glory of God. And that's what Jesus taught me. That's why in this particular scripture, Jesus deals with the storm. Now, let me tell you something. Somebody said, oh, he's God. He is fully God and fully man, but he laid aside the godly, car- godly traits, the Bible says. He took on him the form of a servant. To tell you the truth, everything that Jesus operated in, he operated as an example for my life. Amen. Example for me to live life. Example how I can do life. Now, I have to admit, it's a far stretch from what I'm living. But I want to tell you, buddy, you just keep watching me. This little thoroughbred is going to come out of that stall. And I'm going to, someday, I'm going to begin to run with the big ones. Amen? We're going to be running with Jesus. Because Jesus is my example. You've got to know that. The Bible said we're to live as he lived, walk as he walked. Jesus is my example. So, the reason Jesus faced it, I'm going to tell you what, God did not come down to earth to deal with a storm. Do you understand that? Man, all he had to do was stand up there, pew, 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 pew. They gone. You understand? God's powerful. The reason he came down was to show me how to live and how for me to deal with my storms. So Jesus faced that storm so that I could learn how to face my thorns, storm. The truth of the matter is, if I don't begin to take authority in my storm, my storm will never change. And if I don't begin to move into authority in my storm, my storm has the potential to destroying me. It has the potential of destroying my family, and it has the potential of trying to destroy what God's called me to be and do. But if I will assume the authority that Christ has given to us, that's why courage is so important. Courage is the strength to make a stand and handle it in authority. Now, you'll, you'll never get it if you're still so prone in the flesh. And somebody says, well, my problems is her. And my problems is him. And my problems is that worker I work with. Or my problems is my boss. Or my problems is that lazy laborer I got. You know, whatever it is. And as long as we see that, we have not allowed our lives to move into a level of authority to change storms into blessings in our life. We must allow God, do not tell you through simple prayer, we must allow God to open up our eyes to where we begin to see more than what is seen. And then that's where authority. Some people, some people, you teach them a little bit about authority, and man, and they, they'll start, uh, uh, sweep that floor for me. And some people say, uh, authority, well, what were you? That has nothing to do with godly authority. Uh, godly authority, in fact, will give you the broom. <laughs> you understand? But godly authority has everything to deal with the forces of darkness that are the real source to all of our storms and the real problems that we really face. And the devil is scared to death. He is afraid that you're going to find out that God has put authority in your hands to be able to handle the storms you face. I'm telling you, amen? All right, Jesus woke up. He rebuked the wind. Now, th- this is amazing. Just watch it there just a quick minute. He rebuked the wind. That word rebuke is argue. He argued with the wind. Now, uh, Jesus was not schizophrenic. 
He did not have mental problems. The reason he was on because he knew there was a breath that was causing that wind. All the disciples saw was the waves. But waves wasn't the problem. Wind was the problem. Because behind those waves, there was a wind. And there was a breath. In fact, the very word usage that Jesus used here is the exact word usage that he used when he dealt with demon spirits all through his three and a half years ministry. This word usage that Jesus used there is not the word usage that he dealt with natural things. Not even healing things, but delivering things and taking authority things. So Jesus is teaching me how I must handle the storms of my life. Now, and, and we immediately see Jesus, and so wonderful. I love the pictures of Jesus. Doing it. it's, I've hardly ever seen a bad one. I love to see that huge storm, and then there's Jesus standing on the bow of that boat. Hand raised, rebuking the authority that brought that storm. Now remember what Jesus said. Whatever you allow, I have to allow. But whatever you disallow, Jesus said, I'll disallow it too. Somebody says, Jesus, won't you just come help me? Jesus says, I can't break my word. If you're allowing it, there's nothing I can do. And we stand as a beggar not realizing that there's two hands that I can identify with. We stand as a beggar refusing to allow God to change us from this to this. And the Lord says, this year, there's going to be much of this but God's going to let you see here and give you authority to stop it. For the glory of God. It is amazing how the Lord can use things in our life that the devil brings against us to arouse the lion that God has built inside of us. Literally, when you get fed up, God at that moment can allow that lion to rise up in you. And you can begin to stand in the authority that Christ Jesus has given to each one of us as being a believer. That we're able to access through that power of God's great courage in us. And you can literally tell the devil no more. What situations has happened in your life? What circumstances has the devil came in and robbed from you and stolen from you and taken from you that which you knew that God had given to you and that you knew by God's word, it was God's will for that to be in your life and the devil has come to resist it and to stand against it. And to a lot of you, he's just come to torment you, to not allow you to enjoy the blessings that God has brought into your life. But all of those things are prompting that lion to rise up. We're so used to operating in that lamb, especially in prayer, knowing that humility with the Lord being able to come to the Lord in that humble heart. But I'm talking about you rising up as Jesus did in the wilderness and telling the devil, no more. Telling the devil, no. Can I join you with doing that right now? Are you tired of the devil stealing from you, taking away from you, taking away from your children, robbing the relationship, coming in, building a wall between you and your husband or between your husband and the wife? are against other people, are doing that on your job? Are you tired of the devil doing that? Then I want you to join me right now as we stand in authority. We're gonna allow the Lord's courage to allow that lion to arise in us. Join with me as we make this stand in God's authority. So in the name of Jesus, won't you just speak this, if you would? You that are gathered in a room with other people, you don't feel at home doing it, then speak it inside yourself, but know this, that the devil can't hear your thoughts. He has to hear your words. So as I make this stand with you, if you're in a room with others, then go outside that room later and declare this to the enemy also, all right? Say this with me, say in the name of Jesus, 
I will not tolerate you, devil, anymore. You've robbed from me. You've stolen from me. You've tried to take away the things that God has blessed me with. So in the name of Jesus, I command you no more. I bind your power, believing that the Word of God declares that whatsoever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. I declare this not aloud, and the Bible says that God will not allow it either. So in the name of Jesus, I break the power of the enemy's assault and his attack off of my life. And now, Holy Father, I look to you with a spirit of humility, thanking you, Lord, that you've given such authority into men that love you and want to serve you, that you've not left us without help, but you've given us your name and you've given us your authority to stand against the enemy. And Lord, I want to thank you that you're moving into our life and you're greater than anything that the devil has ever tried to take from us. And we receive by faith the very power of your restoration working in us. I love you, Jesus. I want to live for you with all of my heart. I commit myself in a much deeper way as you have committed yourself to me in such a powerful way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, for the glory of God. I believe as you stand in authority, not only does heaven notice, but hell notices too. And the devil literally has to flee. That's what the Bible says, resist him, stand against him, and he will flee from you. Call one of our prayer counselors right now, call us. Call us on that number on the bottom of your screen and say, hey, I'm making a stand and let us agree with you. There's so much power. You've got to use spiritual things in your life. There's so much power that comes in agreement. So call us on that number on that bottom of the screen and say, I'm making a stand. I just needed somebody to stand with me and let us become that agreeing partner that will stand with you in the power of Jesus' name defeating every force that the devil has tried to bring against you. Well, this is Pastor Jerry Abels saying thank you for being a part of our spiritual family. I'm looking forward to being back with you next time. God bless you. Hi, I'm Pastor Jerry Abels. Thanks for watching Victory today. Victory is a church that's all about people, all about excitement, all about what God's doing in your life. We want to invite you back to watch each week for another exciting time together. To find out more about Victory, give us a call and let us know how we can be a part of your family. God bless you and thank you for watching the program today.